as another international tournament goes by, with England suffering the heartbreak of a penalty shootout defeat once again. Here, at a civil conversation, we're looking forward to resume our journey across the Premier League. But before the season restarts, we wanted to bring you guys some more videos which showcase the ingenuity of humans across the world when they're not breaking into football stadiums. Why are you watering my plants and painting my radiators? Get out! Get out! Get out! So we're carrying on the football theme and we're talking about one of the lifesavers of football. No, not you bottoms up beer dispenser, but under soil heating. As a young lad growing up in Northern England, if it wasn't the rain that got a football game cancelled, it was the dreaded frozen pitch. However, as much as this was devastating news, try telling that to thousands of football supporters in this day and age, it would be unthinkable. Therefore, having a system which can give frozen pitches the boot is paramount. The issue of the frozen pitch goes back to the start of football, with various solutions being used to solve the conundrum, including flamethrowers and in the 1920s, Tottenham even tried to stave off a frozen pitch by putting bales of hay on it. However, as you could probably guess, this was about as effective as an Arsenal title charge and just resulted in the pitch being one big farmyard. Probably the most obscure method was the polysphere, which in 1971 was Leicester City's solution to combating a frozen pitch. This essentially consisted of a massive tent which covered the pitch and blowers underneath allowing the pitch to be a constant temperature. As daft as it looked, it was actually quite effective at staving off frozen pitches, but unfortunately would not catch on by other clubs. Despite the wacky methods to prevent frozen pitches, it was a certain Scouse club who would take the accolade of having the first undersoil heating system in England in 1958. This system consisted of electric wires which were laid underneath the turf, which would heat up when a current was run through them. The system worked so well, the existing pitch drainage couldn't handle all the melting ice, which resulted in the club having to install improved drainage systems. However, despite its efficiency, the electric wire system wouldn't stand the test of time, and today's football grounds opt for a pipe system. This consists of pipes, which run approximately 30 centimetres under the pitch, in which a mix of water and glycerol are passed through the pipes which raises the ground temperature to a few degrees above freezing point and if used correctly, banishes the frozen pitch demons for good. Even though the systems work well for frozen pitches, if you've got a lot of snow on top of your pitch, then it won't do a job for you, mainly because it would cost you a Timo Werner amount of money to run it, so the snow has to be scraped off. Although I know which one I would prefer to pay for. Given how much money floats around football these days, Calling off a game because your pitch is frozen isn't a great excuse, therefore you would expect all top flight clubs in England to have them, however it's not a requirement for clubs to have these systems. On the continent, it's a different story, with German football requiring clubs to have one to confirm promotion to the top flight or the second league. As you can probably guess, these systems don't come cheap, costing in excess of £200,000 but the kind folks in the German League can dish out grants to clubs to help cover some of the costs of installing undersoil heating. Just another thing the Germans have over us when it comes to football, but we'll always still have this, eh Thomas? Thanks for watching, if you enjoyed this video please leave a like and consider hitting that subscribe button and stay tuned as we carry on telling you the stories of the world's greatest achievements, one wonder at a time. This has been a civil conversation and I will see you in the next video.